Hello everyone, my name is Deltlead and welcome back to Vizzy for Dummies. Now, in this video, we're going to go through actually using the knowledge that we've gained so far, and we're going to make our very own simple auto launch script. Now, I'm not going to be showing you how to make a program that can do orbital calculations and then tell you exactly when your burn should start and end. Instead, we're going to use some simple logic and hard code what the rocket needs to do and in what order, then we'll build up to more complex programs in later episodes. So to start off, what do we need to get into orbit in what order? Well, let's first list out everything that needs to happen. We need to throttle up and lock our heading vertically and activate our first stage. Then we need to roll over in an eastward direction and start our turn maneuver. And then after that, we need to separate spent stages and ignite the next engines. And then cut off our engine and wait till we're at our apoapsis. And then once we're at our apoapsis, reignite our engine do our circularization burn and then cut our engines off again once we're in our final orbit. So here's how we're going to do it. The first thing we need to do is use a series of commands to activate our first stage, throttle up our rocket, and then lock its heading vertically at 90 degrees to the ground. We can do this by using the following command blocks here. These three blocks lock our pitch and heading and then set our throttle input to 100%. Then all we have to do is activate the stage. Now, the next thing our rocket will do is roll to align with our gravity turn trajectory. But we can't just start that immediately. We need to add a weight block and use some conditions for our program to wait. Let's have our craft wait to roll when it's at an ASL altitude of 2,000 meters. Then we'll have it pitch over 20 degrees. We'll do that with this block of program here. This halts the program and waits until the rocket is higher than 2,000 meters ASL before completing the rest of the code. Alright, so we've started our roll. What should we do next? Well, we can't just stay at an angle of 70 degrees and expect to get into orbit, so we're going to need to pitch over even more once we're higher up. Let's do the same style of weight program, but instead of waiting for our actual altitude to get higher, we're going to wait for our apoapsis to be around 50,000 meters ASL, and that's semi-close to exiting our atmosphere. Then we'll have our craft burn at only 5 degrees to the horizon instead of 70 degrees. Now we need to wait till we're close to our desired orbit height, then cut out our engines. We're going to create a variable that we can use to control our desired orbit apoapsis very easily for the program. We'll call it target apoapsis, and for now, let's just set it to 200,000 meters. As it stands now, if we had a very low target altitude, like if we try to set it to 60,000 meters, the program wouldn't work very well since we don't pitch up to 5 degrees till we're nearly at our target altitude, so it'd be a really hard shift and then we'd have to cut our engines and we wouldn't have built up enough horizontal velocity. So if we wanted a lower target altitude, we would want to shift our pitch over to maybe 30,000 meters ASL, but for right now, 200,000 meters is going to work fine. Okay, so when our apoapsis is at least as high as our target apoapsis, then we're going to cut the throttle. Now our shift is just going to drift until we tell it to relight its engines for the circularization burn. We want our circularization burn as close as possible to the apoapsis, so we're going to wait until our time to apoapsis is less than 15 seconds. Then we'll light our engines again. We also want to burn exactly prograde now instead of 5 degrees, so we're going to tell our craft to do that before it starts burning. Now let's create a second variable and we'll call it our target periapsis. And then we're gonna set that to 150,000 meters. Now we're basically gonna use the exact same logic for our target apoapsis for this block. We'll use it to kill our engines as soon as our periapsis has been raised over our target periapsis. This program will now fly our rocket to roughly the correct orbit all on its own. But there's one major issue that we've overlooked with this program so far. As it is right now, our rocket would have to be an SSTO to work with this program. We need to stage our rocket at some point and start burning our second engine, but we don't know exactly when we need to stage. Luckily, we don't have to know when to stage or even how many stages we have on our rocket. We can create a second thread of a program that will run in parallel, and all this program does is two things. It checks to see if our stage is out of fuel, and if the stage is out of fuel, activate the next stage and light its engines. I have my stages set up so the inner stage that separates and the next engine are on the same stage, so both will activate with only one command. We'll use a while true loop and an if else statement. While true, the loop will check if the stage fuel is equal to zero. If the fuel is equal to zero, then it'll activate the next stage, else it won't do anything, and it'll just keep looping for as many stages as there are and as many times as we run out of fuel. Now, we're going to add a wait statement and wait until our altitude is greater than 2,000 meters ASL. This is going to prevent an accidental double stage at launch when we haven't technically activated a stage yet, 
and so our stage fuel is technically zero, and so that program will stage, and then our actual program will stage as well, which is going to mess with our takeoff and probably spell doom for our rocket. With all that set up, let's go ahead and take it out to the launch pad and test out our program and see if it actually works as intended. And that's it. This program is going to launch any simple two-stage rocket that you build to whatever orbit you want to, as long as you can designate it with those two variables, target apoapsis and target periapsis. It's a very short program, and it doesn't require a lot of effort at all to build. Now, you may need to tweak the altitude and apoapsis heights that you change your craft pitch at to get a better flight path for a specific rocket, but that's a simple and tedious task that I'm not going to cover here. In the next episode of Visio for Dummies, we're going to talk about how to make hover and auto landing scripts for your rockets. So keep a lookout for that. Now, if you found this episode helpful, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, take care and keep on building.